Hey there, lovely soul. This is Infinity. I want to welcome you to this video for April 2021. This is for Taurus, your sun, moon, or rising. And I'm Infinity. Welcome to my channel. Uh, if you're new, welcome back. If you've been here before, I hope you're subscribed. If you're not, go ahead and subscribe. And please like this video if you watch it and you resonate with it. And I'd love to get your feedback in the comments. I really do love comments. Um, and I read each and every one of them. So please comment your experience here. Please remember this is a general reading. And so maybe this entire reading won't be totally on point for you but um because you're guided here because you're watching this video i guarantee that there is at least a few components um that you're going to if you stick through to the end that is going to resonate for you um if that's not you if this is not for you then um <laughs> then maybe check out um, your moon or your rising and and see how that goes. But I really feel that if you're guided here, you will um, resonate with this reading on some level. Okay, so we're gonna get into it here with the moon, um, the moon, uh, moonology oracle. <laughs> I'm like the moon, the moon, the moonology oracle. Yeah, that's it. Um, here in a second. First, uh, I want to introduce me to you. If I'm new to you, uh, I am Infinity, a psychic, physical empath, a shaman, a mystic. Um, there's a, a lot there. Um, <laughs> ascension guide, soul guide, um, distance energy healer, animal communicator, artist. I do a lot. Um, it, uh, but please check out my website to see all the offerings that I have between tarot and oracle and energy healing and private meditations and um, psychic advice and channeling and mediumship, uh, art, ma I designed masks. So there's a lot of stuff on there that, um, that you can look into as well as my podcast, Evolve Now, Lightworkers with Infinity. You can get that directly on my website as well as ebooks that I that I have and I may bring them up um, in the reading but there's ebooks there they're all free the podcast of course is free guided meditations um, and uh, just check out my offerings and see if there's something that might be for you and you can get to know me a little bit better okay without further ado let's get into the reading starting with the moonology cards um, we have a few oracle decks and we're gonna get some tarot cards too but we're starting off with this uh, moonology card take time to breathe out <sighs> good idea I like that <laughs> take time to breathe out um, I don't want to waste any time I want to get right into the tarot take time to breathe out those are supposed to come out one and two. So we have six of pentacles, queen of swords. I think there's been some intense work going on at Taurus. Um, busy. I'm hearing busy. Two of Cups in reverse. Are we turning that over? Yep, in reverse. Don't get ahead of me. <laughs> uh, I read cards the traditional way and by just feels and by the imagery and what I'm being pointed at it with any given read so what you may see or what you may know um as far as traditional tarot goes and all that could be very different from what is actually going to come out so stay with me queen of wands next queen of wands i'll show you all the cards here in a second i just want to get them all eight of pentacles Came out kind of askew. 
but we're going straight up with eight of pentacles we're getting one more card here one more card here we're going with that top card i'm hearing we're going to keep these for reference okay so six of pentacles great card to start with i'm really digging it i really like the energy here uh queen of swords two of cups in reverse queen of wands two queens eight of pentacles and queen of cups three queens and what popped out because i know you're curious for reference knight of pentacles five of cups the hanged man and four of wands so taurus <laughs> taurus 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 has been busy with projects and not doing a whole lot of sitting around i hear for some of you you've even lost weight while it seems like most of these united states people have <laughs> gained like 25 pounds oh my gosh <laughs> a lot of alcohol consumption unfortunately a lot of of laying around and eating but it looks like you have been busy you have not to say for every single one of you but you've been pretty busy here you may have even um lost some weight gotten to a a regimen of workout but i also feel like you've been working hard on on just work and projects and possibly even handiwork, construction type work. Um, also inner work, a lot of contemplation, a lot of downloads coming in. Um, a lot, wow, these three cards under, uh, wow, just these cards right now. You've been also, okay, so there's a few things I'm seeing here um as these three cards right here we've got queen of wands next to the eight of uh pentacles and the queen of cups oh i thought i shut my door um sorry about that I don't even know if you could hear it, but it was a lot of cat business happening. And I'm going to have to go see about it. Ha! <laughs> okay. I'm back. Um, what's that? Nine and a half minutes in almost. Got cat drama going on over here. Okay, sorry about that. So we have Queen of Wands, Eight of Pentacles, and Queen of Cups just here on this bottom row. So much... Um, A lot of energy coming through about um, connecting with your guides, meditation, um, really getting into stuff that uh, is like maybe new to you, exciting, studying new stuff on like a metaphysical or a spiritual level. I'm, I'm seeing here really seeing the essence of your um, of your magic kind of coming into the real, the real world. Um, <laughs> and creativity, creativity really being a thing, connecting with your guides, being super busy, like inner busy, outer busy, 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 busy. Um, with a lot, a lot of energy. And then it's like, they're showing me when, when you like 
rest or when you sleep or like that you'll just like fall asleep sometimes just like it's hard to get through a movie because it's like by the time you get to that space you're just like you're mentally tired you're physically tired i see like phys like physical exert exertion mental also connecting with guides that sort of thing downloads happening um And a lot of connecting with, with the creative aspects, the inner, the nurturing, um, the being, uh, being like thoughtful in your process, wanting to get to the bottom of the truth of things exploring more about your inner worlds let's get into sacred geometry because i feel here that you're like um you're setting the stage for tr more transformation coming here in april um There's so much here with these queens. The divine feminine definitely coming through. And what's interesting is that the one queen, the queen of earth isn't here. And I'm feeling that, you know, like the queen of earth is you or the queen of um, pentacles, as I, sh I should say, is is what I kind of associate Mother Gaia with in this deck she's the one that's not here but she's represented all over the place and she's like you you are this eight of pentacles is serving kind of like the eight of pentacles like you as you being the earth element because we have queen of wands so fire cups water swords air um a real balancing of the divine feminine, no matter what your gender is, but getting more in touch with that. Oh, wow. Very cool. Very cool card. Love this card. Acknowledgement of our blessings. The gratitude card. This is the second time I've seen this card today in a reading. Um, this is a great card. And so let's, let me get the book here on gratitude. It's card number 38, right? Yeah, 38. Gratitude. Acknowledgement of our blessings. I manifest, manifest positive change and growth through gratitude. Our lives have become so busy that we take for granted aspects of ourselves, our relationships, and our material gains because we get so caught up in the need to strive for more. Thinking we don't have enough of the riches that support our lives, we neglect to truly see the abundance of the of the gains we already have. To be truly grateful is to appreciate all of life's offerings, regardless of whether it is what you need in your life right now. The ability to see beyond the hardship shows strength and understanding. Life cannot be just one big high. Sacred geometry. The 12 pointed star is a representation of a stellated doctahedron as it contains 12 faces it can be perceived as a number of completion and wholeness it is also a representation of the genesis pattern which is two dimensions which in two dimensions is 12 spheres around a central sphere to create 13 within the center of the star is the genesis pattern of the seed of life so let me show you that Okay. Um, we are blessed at conception to be a fractal of the bigger picture. We already inherit all that we need to go about our daily lives to bring fulfillment, happiness, and the like into our lives. For this, we need to 
acknowledge our blessings of being able to partake on earth at this time yes yeah and everything isn't perfect but we're pretty we're pretty um blessed to be here for sure practical application give thanks each day before you go to sleep and upon awakening Give thanks to the people you meet and the relationships you develop. Be thankful for the food on the table and the love of those nearest and dearest. We are richer than we think. Card numerology is six and rose quartz, jade, tangerine quartz, and citrine are the corresponding crystal suggestions for gratitude. Card number 38. Uh, this is a great card and um. If you don't already do this practice of being uh, thinking about what you're grateful for at night and then thinking about what you're grateful for um, in the morning before you like get up out of bed and just spend a few minutes thinking about what you're grateful for. And every day it's going to be something new so you can decide it's one thing or three things or five things or or however you want it to do this and however it comes to you before you go to sleep and upon waking in the morning is definitely something to think about doing. Um, as I read this, this also kind of spoke to me about this this balancing um and also i'm feeling like acknowledging acknowledging how far you've come what you have done what you have accomplished because you have been busy like i said um, the messages from the very, very beginning here was you've been busy. There's been a lot of busyness, a lot of projects, a lot of stuff like that. So, so we're getting this again here about taking time to think about what you're, uh, what you're doing, what you're accomplishing, um, that sort of thing. And, and being grateful for how far you've come what you've accomplished but giving yourself some time to not do anything and I know it can be hard for those of us who are real workhorses and real you know hard-working workaholic type people who like to to get stuff done and do 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 and and just it's just hard not to be doing something I'm definitely one of these people I'm definitely one of these people. Um, so I get it. But because I'm definitely one of these people, it's been a thing, especially um, in March, to work on not working so much and and taking the, the workload down and spending downtime and, and balancing out my energies. And I got to say, I did a pretty good job this month. I did pretty good. Followed my guidance. Um, not 100%. Nobody's perfect. I wish I could say, I followed my guidance 100%. Mm -mm -mm. Be like me. I'm 100%. <laughs> if you hear anybody say that, turn off their video. <laughs> uh, because they're full of shit and crazy because nobody is a hundred percent following their guidance all the time i like to i do for my clients i'm like a hundred percent when it comes to what i'm supposed to do with my clients but my own personal stuff like i procrastinate i can you know be moody about stuff or defiant but but for the most part my goal all the time is to follow my guidance so i'm not a hundred percent i'm not a hundred percent all the time of course not I strive to be, I try to be, but I know that I'm not. <laughs> and I would seriously start feeling all sorts of pinches and, p and sticks and, uh, on my body or whatever if I even tried to get away with even th thinking something like that. My guides would be like, are you insane? <laughs> what are you? Did she just lose her marbles? Um, <laughs> she delusional. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not delusional. 
<laughs> but I do, I, I do know when I have, you know, when I, I have done pretty well this month. I will say that. And I'm allowed to say that because it's true. It's true. I have done pretty good this month. I've done better this month than I ever have. And, and that's the other thing too, is to be grateful for when we do follow our guidance, you know, on a serious note here, when we do follow our guidance, when we are really working hard and, and doing the things that we're being guided to do, and we can see the difference in ourselves and our surroundings and our world, um, there's our card, uh, then where we need to acknowledge that for ourselves. We need to be grateful for the clarity that we can, you know, perceive our guidance and go that way and, and do all that stuff, you know? Okay, so at this time, I'm pulling archetype cards. I pulled the first one is this is from the self pile. Um, they're in four different sets. So it's the selves, the different archetypes of the self um, places, tools, and, uh, initiations or themes of what's going on. So the two sets that we're going to work on, work with is the self pile, which I just got a card there and I'm going to get a tool card right there. <laughs> So, for the self card, we have the comic. So, let's take a look at that. Card number 26, the comic. Oh, so close. The Joker, the clown, the fool. The comic carries a remedy for all that ails this world. Amid the deepest pain and suffering, there is always the potential to lift up and out of the darkness through laughter. Though dis dismissed by some as lowbrow or unsophisticated, this archetype actually has a highly advanced mind. Some may use the word genius. As humor requires one to see the situation from afar rather to be swept away by the drama. The comic sees and accepts the messiness of life, using it as material to be mixed and shaped into a potion to soothe the stress and serious mind. They literally lighten us up. Thus, within the comic is usually the sage or the magician working healing magic upon any audience who will lend an ear. The comic may be the archetype that heals the deep division in our world, one pun at a time. When light, hilarious, and genius, spirited, easygoing. When dark, sarcastic, harsh, bro bro brooding, and drunk. The comic has plenty of... Oh, of shade to throw on others, and it can fall into shadow at the drop of a hat. Beware of their sharp claws and tongues. Joy, jo jokes, and smiles are signs of a happy heart. Be weary of spiritual practices or teachers who leave the comic by the wayside. Yeah. Oh gosh. Another, another video to shut off would be a, a guy to see or a healer that's super serious all the time takes themselves and all this crazy shit way too seriously. We need, we need the levity, the healing of laughter. And let me tell you one of the ways I spend my time um, and keeping light in my world, keeping me grounded and connected is our comics. I absolutely love comedy. I, I am fully into the comedy scene and have been um, tapped into that for maybe about a year now, maybe a little bit longer. I've always loved comedy. However, 
more recently, that's really some, I listen to the podcast and I love specials and I watch stand up comedy and, and low key have always wanted to be a stand up comic. I love making people laugh. It definitely is a healing art and comics are known as geniuses. Um, and I think that a lot of comics, um, a lot of the comics that I watch are empaths, are light workers, are healers. They just don't see themselves that way. A lot of comics see themselves as as broken, messed up people. Um, there's only a few comics that are like, no, I'm my life was great. I don't have any problems at all. And I still think that they they do. They just don't want to talk about it. Um, <clears throat> but at the same time, the best healers have been through pain themselves. I can say that for myself. <laughs> I was chronically ill for most of my 40 years before I got pulled out of that by all this woo-woo business and learning about myself and, and to an extent. But yes, so comic. This is now, let's turn this to you, dear Taurus. Um, and I'm feeling here like... It's interesting because there's all this feminine energy here. Um, and there's a lot of magical type. I mean, just look at the Queen of Wands here. But to me, it also kind of feels like she could be on stage and being like, look at me and my cat. And we're, there's that black kitty down there. And, um, and she could very well be saying, uh, you know, or being on stage and, and, and playing with her light and her magic and that smile on her face. It's like, she is joking around and like. Instead of saying, I'm going to pull a rabbit out of my hat. It's like, watch me manifest in a rabbit and poof, a rabbit appears, you know, kind of thing. And she sits it down next to the cat. Like, and people laugh because it's, it's this magical joke kind of thing. Um, but also I, I, I feel like working on being light, working on that here, um, Uh, there's something, there's this little gnat that's like being a little jokester. Uh, but there's something here about the balance with, within of allowing for the the jokester the trickster the funny the the comedian the the that person is coming out more let that let that come out and this card is take time to breathe out but i i've almost heard it like take time to laugh take time to to get into modes of <clears throat> where you are actually literally laughing and to if you're not tapped into that world tap into comedy and comedians there's awesome comedy in the world right now um and i i highly recommend you know, just youtube comedy stand-up comics um there's so many different types of <laughs> so many different comics out um, you're sure to find a few that you're into. Um, so I'm hearing that. And I'm also hearing allow, I know this isn't an inner child card, but I'm feeling that like play, like allow yourself time to play. So with this time to breathe out, allow yourself time to breathe out, time to laugh, time to play, that sort of thing. Okay, and the flame is your tool. So let's see, as I try to avoid literal flame here. 
<laughs> with my candle. Um, because <laughs> I did kind of burn my other card the other day. It wasn't really bad, but yeah. <laughs> okay, the flame, the fire, the spark, the glimmer. Nice. In Sanskrit, the word for fire is uh, agani. The ancient, <coughs> excuse me, I need some, I need some water. So let me do that before I attempt to read. Ah, hmm. By the way, that's sage and shugnite in my water. I highly recommend. I would put lemon in it too, but I'm out of lemon. So lemon, sage, and a shugnite crystal. Beautiful. Okay. The ancient yogis saw this flame at the center of the abdomen and believed it to be responsible for our vitality. When it is lit, we are connected to our purpose and sense that life is a sacred gift. It is said that those who cannot see the sacred around them have let their inner flame go out. Think of this card as a call to reignite that fire, to cup your hands gently around these things you've forgotten and protect the flame no matter how harshly the winds around you blow. It could be an inner archetype that begs you to light its wick. It is, li it is likely that the poet, the mystic, or the shaman would call to you with, lang with the language of the flame. When light, health, mental clarity, good digestion. When dark, <coughs> sorry, when dark, excess, heat and anger, complete darkness. Go deeper the light you give off by Rumi. And the archetypal fire is at the beginning of all transformation, purification and manifestation. Nearly every spiritual lineage oh, sorry, honors the flame. It's just really hard to read this red type. <laughs> um, to enliven the connection with this archetypal energy, practice the candle gazing technique called um, Tratara. Notice how... Lighting a single candle in any space brings magic to the room and creates a sense of reverence. Oh, yeah. I literally cannot live without flame, without fire, without candles. I get these. Um, I can show you. Well, I can sort of show you right here, but they're just tea lights, but they're that fat. <laughs> They're about that fat. They're six to seven hour uh, burning candles. And I get them on Amazon. And so they just last a really long time. There's no scent to them. You can drop essential oil in there if you want a, if you want a, a scented candle. Um, but really what's important is the actual flame um, to have that around. And you can see the, um, let me show you. You can sense how the energy is around you by how a, a still or not still. I don't know if you can see that actually. It's kind of hard to see that. But when they're mostly still, that means that the energy around the flame is very positive and light when candles are moving around a lot, that means there's a lot of dense energy around you or the candle, you and the candle, and that it's, it's pushing on that. So if you were to cleanse your space with sage and Palo Santo and have crystals and do clearing and stuff, your candles get ni are nice and still. So my candles are very nice and still. I do pay attention to that. And they're, all, they're always nice and still, actually. <laughs> I keep things pretty clear in here. Okay, so there's something about this connection with the flame and the comic here. Like, we need to spark up again that, that light-hearted 
part in you like it's been a lot of very intense work again we're coming back to like projects and work and inner work and outer work and physical work and mental work and creative work and work 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 and and you thrive in that and you really like that um or the opposite of this would be that's kind of coming in would be that it's been more mental work and now it's time to actually spark that flame and put it into action and, and movement and all that because again we have all this feminine energy the the queen of swords came, came in first so there's a lot of thinking going on here with the queen of swords a lot of mental mental business um i'm feeling even like writing uh that sort of thing journaling writing with the queen of wands i'm picking up on more art painting uh that sort of that sort of stuff um getting into different different aspects of manifestation the law of attraction um alchemy ancient practices uh the, that sort of thing um here with the queen of cups i feel like this has been more like researching energy and energy work and psychic and tele telepathy and being psychic and meditation and and doing a lot of meditation um so But it has a more serious tone. And this last card that, remember there was this like little chunk of cards that came out we said we're going to pay attention to. This is the Four of Wands. And that is kind of the energy that I feel that needs to be, needs to come out. That like there hasn't been a whole lot of that sort of party and i mean it's been the pandemic people there's been a lot of people not doing that kind of stuff so how for whatever or for whatever the reason it's been for you um up until now it is the time to think about coming coming out of yourself getting into connection with others and again but that picture is again a couple of females so it's just super heavy here with feminine energy so i really feel like um for those divine feminines or females um however you may identify uh if you are a female or you identify as as a more feminine or divine feminine energy. Now remember, the goal is to be balanced within our divine feminine, divine masculine energies, right? So it's to be a nice blended mix. Not I tap in here and I tap in there, and I you know it's more like the blending of the divine feminine, and the divine masculine. Um, that is really the goal but to get there we need to focus our energy our our awareness on these different aspects and so with all of this this feels very focused on feminine on on this is now remember this is for april so this is there's come we're coming in here with there's been a lot of work and maybe there's been a lot of focus on being practical and setting up your space and 
and moving or changing jobs or doing whatever the things are that have been so busy and now it's time to get into the the inner world the this the healing and 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 using that space it's like i'm setting up a retreat or i'm setting up a a, a, a like the like a room in my house or the back house or the garage or the or some or a place in the garden or you know some place where that's going to be where i go to do my my spiritual work to do my meditation to do my my painting to do like if you have if you have if you've been like setting up your space and you've been working on that it's like now you're finally or you're getting to hopefully the, the time very soon where you can actually do that deeper work and connect with with mother gaia speaking of which your next card here um <laughs> is the leap i'm sorry is th that's another card that i got earlier is healing the earth healing the earth and love humility respect i turn it so the light won't be so bright on it so you can see that card healing the earth beautiful card so here we go we, the humans, have left the care of the planet to the great and unseen spirits all about us. Some, it is true, have taken up the burden created by the many, and we rage and race towards an abyss, telling ourselves that what matters is only today, but tomorrow matters for those yet to be born and for the wisdom within you that can be remembered by the children of the future. Yet the forests have been murdered, the waters polluted, the gifts of the earth brought to the surface and used as playthings. It is time to heal and to remember. For the great ones can do so much, but the true healing must take place in our hearts <clears throat> and move to our actions. Earth healing can be felt one, sorry, earth healing can be felt one, that sentence makes no sense. <laughs> Earth healing can be felt when the when those days, special days when the gates open. Sorry, it's just a very weird sentence. And we can feel the flood of energies pour down. We can help weave those energies into the people by demonstrating what matters most. We can choose to help our Mother Earth to be of service and to have a humble attitude and expression of energy towards her. We can walk gently and openly and know we must help her. We can pick up the fallen bird, plant a tree, speak our truth, and live like this life and this planet matter. It is temporary, this life, but it matters what we do with it. And now you are being asked to be of service through expressing love, humility, respect for the earth in your actions. Let this great goddess nurturing the earth nurture you too. This path will take you away from the disposable, the ungrateful, the careless, and move you into a deeper, truer expression of your soul. And the illumination mantra. I play my part in caring for the earth. I support the great ones in their healing work and embrace being a child of this earth. Excuse me. Um... So, <laughs> we're definitely with this, it, we're definitely, um, we're definitely being guided to think more about Mother Gaia, the earth, what we can do, play our part in healing her, healing the animals, healing each other. When it says healing the earth, it means her and all of us with, within and upon her. Um, when I work in my healing, my healings, she is front and center that of what, you know, what we're, who we're working with um, throughout. And as we heal 
one, we heal all. It's just a thing, you know, it's very, very much how shaman heal. We, we heal through spirit. We heal through connecting with Mother Gaia, through connecting with your spirit guides, with your, with your uh, spirit tribe, with your guardian angels, with your ancestors, with your, um, with all of, all of these, these connections. I'm being, um, <laughs> shown again this flame card connect so i'm hearing hold on connecting reigniting your flame or or making your flame nice and bright again for yourself takes all of the elements the balance here and we have that remember we i was like we have queen of wands queen of queen of cups queen of swords here we have this downpouring of energies. This is what I feel with this Two of Cups being in reverse. It's This is about you connecting with your soul, you connecting with Gaia, you connecting with spirit and bringing these energies down into the body. There, it's, and this, this the, the water of these cups, it's not really, it's not water, it's energy, it's, it's, um, it's life force. It's that beautiful rainbow light that we can connect to that runs everything. The infinite love light energy that is our soul. That is the light of creation. There is a lot of light here. Um, but there's a lot of anchoring into the elements and what's really interesting is one of the last things that came out um, publicly with Gaia and her messages last month um, through the new moon and the full moon and the equinox was about um, technology and that being the new element, that it is natural. So if you didn't see those videos or do that meditation, I highly suggest you go back um, I am going to be writing an article about it, channeling down that information because it's just in this very specific spot still, and it's something that needs to come out in a bigger form. But this here with this, this eight of pentacles, I know that she's, she's working with like, she's, there's nothing technology really about this card but when I thought about it I looked at this so you can almost see like out of view a computer sitting in front of her you don't see it but it, that's kind of like what I'm being shown it's like if you were to see somebody directly from behind and they're sitting in front of a computer but they have their crystals and their herbs and their flower essences and oils and all this stuff because they're looking at stuff and they're online it's like that's the way that and it's kind of the center card here and that's the way that Gaia really wants us to see, to see the elements now and how we need to balance that out. Um, okay, so pay attention to these new energies coming in. I guess the takeaways here would be to take time to connect with Gaia, connect with yourself, your inner child, allow for play, allow for laughter, spend time laughing, research it, comics and comedy. If you haven't done that, if that's not something that you've been into, check it out because it is extremely healing to laugh. And for a lot of us, it's been like, we haven't had a whole lot of personal interaction to be with other people, to tell stories, to laugh, to hear jokes and all that stuff and to just be very social. And even if we do, that's one of the things that people like to do anyway is to, is to watch comics and go to comedy shows and things like that. So I highly encourage you to get into that, um, into that kind of mindset that will really help lighten things up. Um, and tapping again into the divine feminine and maybe recognizing the, the, the physical manifestation of these different queens coming in and through you or into your life. Or I'm seeing that like you may even be like, wow, this person really represents 
this or that or you feel that within yourself like I'm kind of seeing that sort of thing okay I hope that this uh, reading resonates with you that it's offered some um, insight and and advice for you and I hope that your April is beautiful and really um, fun and playful and that you laugh a lot and enjoy yourself don't take things too seriously but spend time um, uh, connecting with Gaia. Mother Nature, going out into Mother Nature, enjoying uh, your the nature around you, I guess, is, is definitely something here. And light more candles. Again, I'm being shown this card here. Um, light candles. If you don't light a lot of candles, get tea lights. Go on Amazon. Check that out. And have a beautiful April, Taurus. Until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.